there's a problem with refrigerator magnets. If you have a newer refrigerator, they don't stick to the refrigerator anymore. Since they no longer stick to our new refrigerator, I built a refrigerator magnet holder. And it rotates around so that you can fill it up with magnets on both sides. I made this with both traditional woodworking tools like a table saw and with the Shaper Origin CNC router. Um, I put the plans on the Shaper Origin, you know, Shaper Hub site so anybody can get them. You can make one of these things. Uh, this video will not go over every detail on the build, but I'm going to go over the key things. There's a couple of unusual uh, features to it. One is that the um, the steel plate is actually held in some slots. I've cut slots all around this frame, and the, the steel plate is held in with sex bolts, eight sex bolts. So it makes it very strong. You've got, um, you know, the, the frame is literally bolted onto the steel plate. So it makes a really sturdy frame and it holds that uh, steel in there pretty tightly. Um, so I'll go into the details on that, and I'll give you some details on how to make this pivoting um, structure on it. Let me make sure the camera's looking at that. Yeah, so it pivots on a, a 10 millimeter steel pin, and that's what makes it spin around so you can use both sides. Um, I'll go into the details on how to install that, and I'll give you some tips on how to do the cutting with the Shaper Origin CNC router. The surface of the steel plate was very dirty. I cleaned it up with a flat disc on an angle grinder that's not shown in this video and then did some sanding with a random orbit sander not to try to make it look really smooth and polished but just to clean up some of the bigger scratches and to get all the dirt off of it. The frame is built like a traditional picture frame so I just used the table saw to cut the frame pieces and it is going to be built around the steel plate using a dado that goes around the inside of all of the frame pieces um, the frame overlaps the steel by three quarters of an inch, so that dado I made 13 sixteenths of an inch deep to give the frame a little bit of wiggle room. And to cut those dados, I just had to set the table saw fence at half of the thickness of the frame material. And I just used this little micro jig um, gadget to do that. You can see it's lined up there to give me that uh, exact one half thickness of the frame material for my um, rips and there's the dados just getting ripped in there. The introduction showed how the frame you know, spins around so you can use both sides of that plate for the magnets and because of that the um, frame pieces are all symmetrical. There's no front and back to them. They're the same on both sides. This is the setup for cutting the 10 millimeter holes for the pivot dowels. That little vertical piece on the left side is just a piece of scrap, same 45 degree angle as the boards to make the frame. And I just use it to line that up. So each of these um, frame pieces, the short sides of the frame pieces will be lined up in the same spot and it makes it really easy to cut those 10 millimeter holes using the Shaper Origin. The dowels are 10 millimeters. So if you cut an exact 10 millimeter hole with the Shaper Origin, it's gonna be a super tight fit, so you'll probably need to add some negative offset. That goes for both the frame pieces and the um, support pieces on the side. So use the actual dowel to test that, you know, before you unclamp it from the workstation. And the offset is likely to be different on the frame pieces and the side support pieces. Anyhow, save yourself some grief and check the fit with an actual dowel before you unclamp. The frame is assembled with glue at this point, and it's pretty fragile, so, you know, it's just wrapped around that steel plate. In order to make it not fragile, I use sex bolts. This shows my setup for drilling for the sex bolts. I'm drilling through both the frame itself and the steel plate, so, you know, I've got about three quarters inch of steel plate um, that goes into the frame, and so I'm able to, to stick a sex bolt in it that will hold both the frame and the steel. The gadget I'm using is a Rockler drill guide. I just have it clamped down there. Uh, that'll hold the drill nice and straight. I've also got the um, steel frame or the steel plate taped into the frame so it won't shift around, especially for the first one or two screws. I'm a little bit worried about it shifting. 
After you get two screws in there, it shouldn't shift at all. Since you're drilling through both the frame and the steel plate, you need to use a drill bit that's appropriate to drill steel. I believe I used a cobalt drill bit. Um, I think the, the uh, I think it was a quarter inch bit, if I recall correctly. That's the barrel on the little sex bolts, I think was a quarter inch. So once I've got the first hole drilled, I install a sex bolt in the first hole. Still, you know, that, that steel plate could move around some. So the second one, the second hole, I put in, uh, you know, catty corner to the first. And once I get that second hole in and the second bolt installed, now that frame's really not going to move around much. So here I'm, I'm drilling the second hole and then I will install the second bolt. At this point, I've got the two screws in so that steel plate's not going to move around in the frame. Uh, it's not super sturdy yet, so I'm going to add six more bolts. So there's two bolts in each piece of the frame. As I do the assembly, I'll talk a little bit about the order of cutting. And this is in the ShaperHUD project too. It tells you what order to cut these things in. The first thing you want to cut is the little side brace. That has no mortise in it, it's just an outline. And then you want to cut the mortise that goes in the side support for that brace. And then finally, once you have those two pieces cut, you can cut the mortise in the bottom, that, that oval shaped thing uh, in the bottom that has the mortise. If you do things in that order, then you can use the previously cut parts to sort of test the size of the mortise and add negative offsets when that makes sense to get a, you know, a, a snug but not overly tight fit to make the glue up a little bit easier. I didn't do that when I cut mine. I just cut all the pieces out and then sanded them later to get them to fit in the mortises. And that worked okay, but I think it would be a little easier to do it in the right order and use some negative offsets as you're cutting things out with the Shaper Origin. At this point, I've got two side assemblies, but I haven't yet cut the centerpiece. Here I'm doing a test fit for it, and as you'll see, it's a little bit too loose initially. Um, so I just shaved, I don't know, an eighth of an inch off of it or something like that before I glued the thing together. I really recommend you do this just in case your frame is a little bit smaller than is shown on the plans. Once the entire support assembly is glued up, it's time to install the dowel pins. I had to use a lot of force to pound mine in, but I, I, you pound them in so that they just barely protrude from those um, side supports. And, um, and then basically you set up the frame with some shims and blocks, and I use playing cards to get it at exactly the right height so that the holes on the frame align with the um, dowel pins sticking out of those side supports. Then I use the big long horizontal clamp in the middle just to clamp down uh, on those um, dowel pins to sort of squeeze them into place. And that worked really well. I'm taking the shims out and uh, my playing card shims and um, there it rotates around pretty nicely. All right, thanks for watching the video. I ask you now to like and subscribe. Um, to my channel. And um, if you make one of these, I'd sure love to see a picture of it. Uh, thanks. That's all for now. Bye.